Calculation. This first calculation example is for a thousand liters of solution, is simply to show the method. This is not an actual case, since it is considered that the water is demineralized and does not contain any element that we have to compensate for in operations. We will base ourselves on Steiner's universal solution and for the calculation we will use the simple rule of 3 and molecular weight. Let's start with the calculation. We start with calcium. It is available in calcium nitrate and its molecular weight is 164. One mole of calcium weighs 160 grams and provides 40 grams of calcium. We then calculate the amount of calcium nitrate to provide 183 grams of calcium. Well, we have X equals 183 times 164 divided by 40, it gives 750.3 grams of calcium nitrate. Therefore, 750.3 grams of calcium nitrate are required to make up 183 parts per million of calcium. We continue with available nitrogen in calcium nitrate. The molecular weight is 164. One mole of calcium nitrate weighs 164 and provides 28 grams of nitrogen. We use 750.3 grams of calcium nitrate and then we look for the amount of nitrogen contained. So we have X equals 750.3 times 28 divided by 164, resulting in 128.1 grams of nitrogen. So 750.3 grams of calcium nitrate supply 128.0 grams of nitrogen. We still need 39.9 parts per million to reach the required 168. We then continue with nitrogen and potassium. These are contained in potassium nitrate. And the molecular weight is 101. One mole of potassium nitrate weighs 101 grams and provides 14 grams of nitrogen. We calculate the amount of potassium nitrate to provide the amount of 39.9 grams of nitrogen. So X equals 39.9 times 101 divided by 14, resulting in 287.85 grams of potassium nitrate. Now we calculate the amount of potassium provided by 287.85 grams of potassium nitrate. We do the calculation, taking into account that 101 grams of potassium nitrate provide 39.9 grams of potassium. X equals 287.85 times 39.9 divided by 101, resulting in 111.15 grams of potassium. So 287.85 grams of potassium nitrate supply 39.9 grams of nitrogen and 111.15 grams of potassium. We still need 115.87 parts of potassium. We now calculate the potassium and phosphorus present in monopotassium phosphate. This has a molecular weight of 136. One mole of monopotassium phosphate weighs 136 grams and provides 39 grams of potassium we still need 115.85 parts per million. We do the calculation and we have X equals 115.85 times 136 divided by 39, resulting in 403.98 grams of monopotassium phosphate. Now we carry on with the phosphorus. We use 403.98 grams of monopotassium phosphate and we look to calculate the amount of phosphorus present. We take into account that 136 grams of monopotassium phosphate contain 31 grams of phosphorus. So X equals 403.98 times 31 divided by 136 resulting in 92 grams of phosphorus. 
we can see that those 92 grams of phosphorus exceed the required amount of 31 grams in the formula and are also outside the range of nutritional needs. We have to adjust the amounts of potassium nitrate and monopotassium phosphate. We calculate again the amount of phosphorus included in monopotassium phosphate. One mole weighs 136 grams and provides 31 grams of phosphorus. This is the exact amount to supply the 31 parts required for potassium. One mole of monopotassium phosphate contains 39 grams of potassium. We still need 188 parts, which will be supplied by potassium nitrate. Now we calculate the nitrogen and potassium containing potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate has a molecular weight of 101. One mole of potassium nitrate provides 39 grams of potassium and we still need 198 parts of per million. We do the calculation and we have x equals 198 times 101 divided by 39 which results in 486.87 grams of potassium nitrate. Moving on to nitrogen. We use 486.87 grams of potassium nitrate and now calculate the amount of nitrogen present. We take into account that a mole of potassium nitrate weighs 101 grams and provides 14 grams of nitrogen. We still need 39.9 parts per million. So, x equals 486.87 times 14 divided by 101 and results in 67.48 grams of nitrogen. So, 486.87 grams of potassium nitrate provides 67.48 grams of nitrogen. This exceeds the required parts, but still remain within the optimal range of nutritional needs. We continue with magnesium. It is available in magnesium sulfate. The molecular weight is 120. A mole of magnesium sulfate weighs 120 grams and provides 24 grams of magnesium. And now we calculate the amount of magnesium sulfate that provides 49 parts per million required. So X equals 49 times 120 divided by 24, which gives 245 grams of magnesium sulfate. Then, 245 grams of magnesium sulfate provide 49 grams of magnesium and also an amount of sulfur that we will see below. Sulfur is available in magnesium sulfate and has a molecular weight of 120. A mole of magnesium sulfate weighs 120 grams and provides 32 grams of sulfur. We now calculate the amount of sulfur contained in 245 grams of magnesium sulfate. So we have x equals 245 times 32 divided by 120, which gives 65.33 grams of sulfur. Then 245 grams of magnesium sulfate provide 65.33 grams of sulfur. We still need 1.67 grams to meet the requirement. Sulfur is also present in manganese, zinc and copper sulfate that we will see next. For manganese, it is available in manganese sulfate, which has a molecular weight of 151. A mole of manganese sulfate weighs 151 grams and provides 55 grams of manganese. We now calculate the amount of manganese of sulfate to provide 1.97 grams of manganese. X equals 1.97 times 151 divided by 55, which results in 5.4 grams of manganese sulfate. And that amount of 5.4 grams of manganese sulfate in turn provide 1.14 grams of sulfur. We now continue with zinc, which is available in zinc sulfate. It has a molecular weight of 161. 
A mole of zinc sulfate weighs 161 grams and provides 65 grams of zinc. We now calculate the amount of zinc of sulfate to provide 0.11 grams of zinc. So X equals 0.11 times 161 divided by 65 equals 0.27 grams of zinc sulfate. And in turn, 0.27 grams of zinc sulfate provide 0.05 grams of sulfur. For copper, it is available in copper sulfate. It has a molecular weight of 159.5. A mole of copper sulfate weighs 159.5 grams and provides 63.5 grams of copper. We now calculate the amount of copper sulfate to provide 0.02 grams of copper. So X equals 0.02 times 159.5 divided by 63.5, which equals 0.05 grams of copper sulfate, which in turn provide 0.01 grams of sulfur. And to meet the requirement of 67 grams of sulfur, the amount of magnesium sulfate is increased to 251.25 grams. We now continue with boron, which is available in boric acid. It has a molecular weight of 62. A mole of boric acid weighs 62 grams and provides 11 grams of boron. And we calculate the amount of boric acid to provide 0.44 grams of boron. So we have X equals 0.44 times 62 divided by 11 and results in 2.48 grams of boric acid. Therefore, 2.48 grams of boric acid are required to complete 0.44 parts per million of boron. And finally, molybdenum is available in sodium molybdate, which has a molecular weight of 206. One mole of sodium molybdate weighs 206 grams and provides 96 grams of molybdenum. We now calculate the amount of sodium molybdate to provide 0.007 grams of molybdenum. So we have X equals 0.007 times 206 divided by 96, which equals 0.015 grams of sodium molybdate. Then 0.015 grams of sodium molybdate provide 0.007 parts per million of molybdenum. The quantities of nutrients required, according to our calculations, are 750.3 grams of calcium nitrate, 406.87 of potassium nitrate, 136 grams of monopotassium phosphate, 251.25 grams of magnesium sulfate, 5.4 grams of manganese sulfate, 3 grams of iron chelate, 2.48 grams of boric acid, 0.27 grams of zinc sulfate, 0.05 grams of copper sulfate, and 0.015 grams of sodium molybdate. 